Section 1. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 through 5. Now we begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, as the recording is not played twice. Listen carefully to the conversation and answer questions one to five. School of Architecture, Professor Burt's office. Oh, good morning. I was wondering if you could give me some information about the forthcoming Architecture 21 conference.、Uh, dates, enrolment procedures, costs, that sort of thing? Uh huh. Well, the conference runs from the 18th to the 20th of October. 18th to the 20th of October? Oh, good. I'll still be here then. And, um, where exactly is it being held? Is it at the university as in previous years? No, it's actually being held at the Pacific Hotel. We've rather outgrown the university conference facilities, so we've opted for this new venue. Right, Paradise Hotel. No, the Pacific, that's P A C I F I C. Oh, right. And presumably we can get accommodation at the hotel? Yes, but you'll need to contact them direct to arrange that. I'll give you the number for hotel reservations. Have you got a pen ready? Yes, go ahead. It's area code 07 and then 9333266. And what's the registration fee? Individual fees are $300 for the three days or $120 a day if you only want to attend for one day. Are there any student concessions? There's a 50% concession for students, so that's $150 for the three days or $60 a day. And am I too late to offer to give a talk? Oh, I'm pretty sure you've missed the deadline for that. Oh, really? But I've only just arrived here in Australia. Is there any way I could have a paper accepted? Well, you'd need to talk to Professor Burt,、uh, the conference organiser. I can put you through if you like. That'd be great. Oh, and can I just check the spelling of his name? Is that B U R T? Yes, that's correct. You have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen carefully and answer questions 6 to 10. Professor Burt speaking. Oh, hello. My name's John Helston. I'm an architecture student at London University. I'm here in Australia for three months looking at energy saving house designs. Right. I'm interested in giving a talk on my research at the conference, but I believe I may have missed the deadline. Well, strictly speaking, you have. The closing date was last Friday. Oh, no. But we may be able to include your paper if it fits into our program, but you'll have to be quick. OK. a y What do I need to do? Send me a summary of your talk and make sure you include an interesting title for the talk, something to attract people's attention. OK. a y Interesting title. Right. I'm looking at ways of designing buildings for tropical climates that don't rely on the need to include air conditioning, so I'm sure I can come up with something. Yes, quite. But remember, the outline should be no more than 300 words. Right. I'll try to keep it down to 300 words, but would 400 be okay? No, not really, because we have to print it in the proceedings and we just don't have the space. Sure, I understand. And also, can you send me a short CV, the usual stuff, name, age, qualifications, that sort of thing? Right. OK.、Uh, short CV. Actually, you can email it to me. That'd be quicker. 
Sure. Uh, what's your email address? Well, the best thing would be to send it to the conference administrative officer at info, that's I-N-F-O, at uniconf.edu.au. Right. I'll do that straight away. That is the end of section one. You will now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to Section 2. Section 2. First you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully to the short introductory talk and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to Apsley House. My name's Henry James, and I'm the proprietor of this, I must say, wonderful old house. My staff and I will do all that we can to ensure that your stay here at Apsley House is both informative and relaxing. If you look at the schedule I've prepared, you will see that we have planned a number of different activities for you. But what I'd like to do today is to introduce the house to you. So let's first deal with the history of the house. Apsley House is known as one of the finest houses in England. It was originally designed and constructed by the Scottish-born architect Robert Adam between the years 1771 and 1778, and from day one was the office of the Duke of Wellington. Back then it was a private house, but in 1987 it opened to the public for the first time. The Duke of Wellington was an avid collector of art, and if you look to the room to your left, can everyone see that all right? Yes? Good. You will see a rather large art gallery. The viewing gallery is 90 feet long and houses a wide range of art from all over Europe. Until recently, the gallery was closed to the public, but I'm pleased to say that it is now open and you are free to visit any time you wish. If you take a look at the schedule, you will see that I'll be talking to you about the gallery tomorrow after breakfast, so if you're interested in art, please be here by 9 o'clock for the talk. You now have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen to the rest of the short introductory talk and answer questions 16 to 20. This room here, to your right, is the cafeteria. Breakfast is served from 7.30 to 8.30 a.m., although you can request breakfast in your room if you prefer. The dining hall serves a traditional English breakfast, although vegetarian food is available on request. Just let the kitchen staff know the previous evening. Outside you will find a magnificent garden. A section of the garden was converted into a car park in 1990 to make way for the growing number of visitors. Nevertheless, much of it remains and is an ideal place for you to wander and enjoy the peace and quiet or simply sit and read. There are a lot of animals in the garden, including birds, squirrels, rabbits, oh, and not to forget Felix the cat. Now don't be alarmed if the animals come up to you. They are used to people and very friendly. Anyway, dinner will be served at 7, so in the meantime, please feel free to simply wander and enjoy the hospitality Apsley House has to offer. That is the end of Section 2. You will now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now, turn to section 3. Section 3. You will hear a conversation about a student's study. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the study centre of Cardiff University. I am Professor Jody, your student study consultant. I know as a new student, you will meet some troubles with your studies and life. So we will have three consecutive lectures. Study strategies on today, social life, and local snacks on next Monday and Tuesday. I will introduce you to some study skills and answer your questions. Well, first of all, let's talk about some factors which can affect your study. What problems do you meet as a freshman? Yes, Professor. What's the biggest difference between university and middle school regarding study? A good question. I think the biggest difference is that a university student will have to do a lot of work on their own, such as doing research. Do you mean we should read and think independently? Yes, that's the first important factor of being a successful university student. Fine! How about taking more lectures? I heard that they can help our studies. Is that right? Some students prefer to attend more extra lectures to improve themselves, but in fact it might affect their own study. My advice is to use your holiday time. I mean, you should know how to take control of your time and work effectively. Fine. Another factor is to overcome your stress. Many students usually have a feeling of homesickness, particularly for overseas students. There is no family or friends here, so maybe loneliness and heavy studies can lead to great stress. So, I suggest if you come in contact with such troubles, it is a good way to make some new friends or take up some social activities on the weekends. How do we know about the social activities, Professor? You may get the activity schedule from the Student Union. Fine! Now, look at questions 25 to 30. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Well, let's talk about some study strategies. Where should we begin? How about listening to a lecture? Yes, I am worried about that too. OK, if you cannot keep up with the lecturer, why not prepare a recorder or something like that to record the lecture. Good idea! And I think you should prepare lecture materials in advance and then check your notes with other students after the lecture if you cannot take them all at the lecture. Great! And how about presentations? Do we have to do many presentations? Yes, you will do presentations nearly on all subject lectures. Should we use PowerPoint? Yes, of course. And can we choose a partner to do a presentation together? Maybe or maybe not. 
Sometimes you can have a group presentation, but you have to do it by yourself on most of the lectures. OK, a y I know. Professor, I know we have to spend a lot of time reading material. I want to know if we can get them from the internet. Sometimes you can read materials at the computer at home. Really? Yes, but you must have a username and password from the computer centre. Fine. And usually you will have many academic journals to read, so a proper reading method is very important. What kind of method? The approach I use is skimming. It means to skim the book first to see what's important and what isn't. Do we need to master a skill of analysing reading? Yes, that's the next important method of reading. The method can help you to remember what you have read. Fine, and how about the assignment? You will write a lot of essays as your assignment. Essays? Yes. How about the strategy of writing essays? First, you should make a good draft plan for writing and pay attention to the deadline. Deadline? Yes. Can we extend that? You could ask your personal tutor. Fine. And before handing in your work to your tutor or department, you should do proofreading first to check form, grammar, spelling, and references. OK. a y If you meet some other problems with your study, you can ask your tutor for help. Well, any other questions? This is the end of section three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now, turn to section four. Section four. You will hear a conversation about technology. First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now, listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Welcome to the Magic Earth. I'm Christine. Today we have invited a geographer, Andrew Fleming, the leader from the British Antarctic Survey, to give us an introduction about using satellite to map Antarctic sea ice. Welcome, Andrew Fleming. Thank you, Christine. Well, as you know, cruising in the Southern Ocean isn't always plain sailing. But as it is becoming important to find better ways of navigating safely and avoiding future collisions because of the increasing visitorships, the Antarctic Polar View Project is using satellites to map the sea ice to help ships find the best way in the vast White Continent. There are very large lumps of heavy ice in the water which might look beautiful and white with penguins dancing on top of it, but I believe you do not want to hit it very fast with a ship. Otherwise your ship will be damaged, and therefore navigating through it is an important problem, not only in terms of the safety of the ship, but in terms of the speed of the ship. and the efficiency of the ship. So you could have another choice, for example. Take a quicker and cheaper route 
rather than spending an excessive amount of time going through an area of very thick ice. The quickest way to travel is to clear water channels, but it is a difficult task to find these routes. The area we're dealing with is absolutely enormous. The only way of monitoring that area of ocean effectively is by using satellites. Therefore, we use a satellite named the NVSAT, which is a satellite that collects information and picks up differences in ocean surface roughness, and that helps us to see the difference between open water and the sea ice. Radar allows the Antarctic team to see straight through the clouds down to the surface of the sea. With detailed images, it's even possible to see cracks in the surface which can lead to dangerous ice falls. Wherever possible, we would use helicopters quite a lot and put them up in the air to map the ice and look for where we might find what we call leads, you know, which are large areas of clear water that the ship might be able to move through. But it is certainly a much more difficult and time-consuming operation. So does the image that you get from the polar view map give a good description of what you're actually seeing out there on the sea? Yes, it does. We cannot yet know clearly about the thickness of the sea ice. But one of the science researchers that we were doing last summer was looking at doing some of that work using satellites as well. So that's going to be quite an exciting development. The map was coloured in various shades of grey, but it didn't take long to spot the difference between the dark, smooth open water and light, textured areas of sea ice. The first step is to take the image merely, which has to be sent to the ship. How about others? Internet connection in the Antarctic and on ships is notoriously poor and that has meant that we have to compress the image a lot, cut a lot and delete some of the details in the image as a result. Have you solved the problem? Yes. The normal way that we are doing this is by compressing the images into a format known as JPEG 2000. JPEG 2000 allows us to, number one, compress the imagery a lot more. And secondly, it allows us to maintain the geographic position of the image. So it knows where the image is and allows us to position that on a map. And how long does this take? I tested this in January over a very narrow dial-up satellite connection and it took a few minutes. Sure, for us it is an enormous achievement. I mean, we now know fairly well the kind of sea ice conditions we are likely to encounter. So it is a fantastic and useful system. We just need a laptop on the ships. That's great. Thanks to Andrew for his introduction and... This is the end of Section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Thank you.